This is actually moving in the right direction. William McDonald, one of the most blatant racist citizens of Wisconsin, has now pleaded guilty to one felony and one misdemeanor after being charged by federal agents for a series of hate crimes. The criminal, 45 year old resident of West Wisconsin, had been threatening violence upon nearby residents for the color of their skin. Here are just some of the heinous acts he admitted to. In April 2022, after a black woman moved into his apartment complex with her two minor children, McDonald decided to vandalize the family's front door with racial graffiti and left a note calling her family a racial slur and demanding the woman leave the building. McDonald then turned his racial outrage toward greeting his new neighbors with hate. McDonald confessed to vandalizing a black woman's vehicle parked outside of her apartment by slashing her tires and smashing her windshield and leaving a note on her car laced with racial slurs threatening to slash her throat and demanding she move out of West Allies in March 2021. A week later, he then slashed two of her car tires, left another one filled with another note filled with racial slurs with a warning that she move out of the neighborhood or suffer violence. Here are Tanithia Addison and her fiance, Reginald Wilkerson, who had a safe house for their child in another location. So they would not be subject to McDonald's racial cruelty. The couple faced constant sleepless nights, fearing threats of harm, according to Mr. Wilkerson. He recalled being told to go back to where he comes from under threat of injury to him and damage to his property. You're looking at some of the examples of the damage. As for the threats, one letter said, get the F out of my neighborhood N word. And another note read, you thought I was playing about driving and speeding in my neighborhood, you piece of ish. Get the F back to the effing north side where you belong before I put sand in your gas tank. With over nine African and Latino victims that McDonald targeted, terrorized and stalked. He has pleaded guilty to one felony and one misdemeanor and faces a maximum of 11 years in prison with a scheduled sentencing of June 29th. The DOJ Civil Rights Division handled prosecution. And the case caught the attention of East Wisconsin Attorney General Gregory J. Hanstad. Top ranking federal law enforcement official in the Eastern District of Wisconsin. And he issued a statement of support to the victims of the case. It says, and I quote, the conduct at issue in this case strikes at the very core of the civil rights guaranteed to every American citizen under federal law. I commend the courage of those targeted by Mr. McDonald for coming forward. The US Attorney's Office remains committed to working with all federal, state, and local partners to hold individuals who violate the civil rights of others fully accountable under federal law. Uh, The reality is, yes, the federal government got involved. Yes, the federal government moved this thing in the right direction, but it was still slow based on what he did. Remember, he had been harassing people for years, racist for years. Complaints had been coming against him for years. The apartment complex allowed him to remain there, even though he was antithetical to the livelihood of black and brown people. So you have a prosecution. He's charged with a lot of crimes because he did a lot of crimes. He gets to plead down to basically one. All right, I know they say two is basically one. So he pleads down to one. And the dynamic is, well, it's a maximum of 11 years. He will never get the maximum. It won't happen. It should, but it likely will not. Why accept a plea deal? The man is in the wrong and you have significant evidence to go ahead and do what you do to gang bangers. Make an example out of them. Isn't that what you say? You hold press conferences and you say, we're going to make an example out of these people. We're going to not accept any plea deal. Why do we continue to accept plea deals from racist terrorists in the United States of America? Why do we allow that? That should be the abnormal remedy, not the norm. 
All right, Rick, thoughts here. Yeah, uh, I'll keep it quick. Um, you know, the tires slash the child not being able to be with the parents. Those are traumatizing things that will have lasting impacts on these folks. I think one thing that I'll pivot to is the note. First off, he admitted to it, so the plea deal is like yeah. ridiculous. But the note saying, aside from the racial slur, my neighborhood, like he has control over the entire block, over the entire town, what he says goes. It's this level of control that a lot of folks like him believe that they have when in reality they just don't. Yep, all right, there you go.